In this video, we'll talk about what goes on behind the scenes whenever you enumerate through an iDictionary collection. And this is going to set the stage for the next video that talks about the iEnumerable and iEnumerator interfaces and how to create custom ones for your own custom collections. So to set the stage, I've created a simple uh, VB console application called iDictionary underscore enumeration. And I pose the question here in the, the comments that have you ever thought about what goes on behind the scenes whenever you create a collection like a hash table and then iterate through it? You may not give it a whole lot of thought. Let's just go ahead and run this real simple example. In this case, I just add first, second, third, Oldsmobile Geo Plymouth, and then just print it out in which case we see car third, second, first. No big deal. We never attempted to order it or anything like that. It's just, that's how it is. But have you ever thought about what goes on behind the scenes? And, and did you realize that you can actually get into and do the enumeration yourself? That you have total control of that enumeration process and that you can change the way that the enumeration occurs? by implementing your own uh, version of the iEnumerator and i uh, enumerate a bull interfaces. Before we get too deep into that, let's talk about what's going on behind the scenes whenever uh, you create a collection and that you begin to um, loop through it in, in a for each fashion. So I've got a couple comments here and I'll use these as talking points. Um, what's going on behind the scenes is that the hash table has to figure out how to go through each of the items. It has to start at the beginning, it has to know when to move to the next key, and then it has to be able to get the value of the key from, from the hash table itself. And the way that it does it is through a series of, of calls to an object that's returned by a, a get enumerator function. So all iDictionary collections implement this iEnumerator in some uh, interface in some way or fashion. And this get enumerator returns back an object, and that object has to implement methods for resetting and moving and obtaining the value of each object in the collection. And so what happens is it calls the enumerator's reset method, then every time it loops through it calls the move next method of the enumerator object, and then finally it uses the current method to return back an instance of the dictionary entry and then from there you can get the key and the value of it. And so let me paste in some more code to show you how we can actually take over the process of the uh, and get at the enumerator object and do things with it. In this case what I've done was called the hash tables get enumerator method and it's going to return back to me an object and that object's going to implement the I enumerator interface which means that it has to implement the reset method, it has to implement a move next method, has to uh, implement a current method which returns back then um, a dictionary entry that has the key and the value for the current item that it's on. Okay, so basically in this case I'm just creating an object O as object and set that equal to whatever's returned from the get enumerator method of the hash table. And in this case uh, like I suggest here that it's actually a version of the enumerator, I enumerator called the hash table enumerator. Um, just so I don't have to worry about the specific type of enumerator, I just used object and, and allow um, the eternal reflection to know which one that I'm using. But at any rate, I can call the reset, which again puts us to the beginning of the collection, and then I call the move next so that I can move to the first item in the collection, and I could call move next a number of times and just loop through it using my own methods instead of using the for each method. And so in this case, I just uh, am able to use the enumerator to get the key and the value. Notice that I'm not using the current method like I do below that you can use the enumerator to get the key and the value, so they built that in. But probably a more formal way to do this is what I've done in the second section of this code snippet, where I actually create an entry op object as a dictionary entry, and I set that to whatever's returned from the uh, enumerator dot current. So this should return me a dictionary entry, which should be the current item that I'm in, the, in on the hash table object. So again, I just type uh, put entry.key, entry.value. 
So let's go ahead and save this and then run it really quick. And then I'll give you some observations uh, in just a moment. So our console comes up. This is the output from the first code that we had in there. We'll just ignore that for the time being. Notice here that our first time through is key is third and value is Plymouth. And once again, the key is third and the value is Plymouth. That looks great. So what we were able to do is basically take over uh, the functionality of enumeration through our collection, which means that we can customize how we want uh, enumeration to happen for our collections. Now that comes in handy in two ways. If we want to customize the way that a hash table, uh, our particular version of the hash table is um, is enumerating through, we can control that ourselves. But more importantly, when we get into creating custom collections, uh, as we'll talk about in the next couple of videos, you're going to be able to implement this functionality so that your custom co uh, collections can be enumerated in a very um, specific way. And the way that we'll show in the next video is how to control enumeration so that, like say for example, we want to load um, information from 10,000 different files that sit on a hard drive. Well, you don't want to load each of those up as you create a instance of your collection object. You want to only grab the information that the end user programmer of that collection is actually going to use. You want to make sure that you only read one file at a time as they request it and then cache off that in information so that you don't have to grab it a second time. Instead of making the end user wait for um, all 10,000 records on the hard drive to be read, uh, the same could be true for um, like what we'll do. I'll show you how to do for entry logs. Um, or rather error logs, and uh, but it could also be true of, of connecting to databases or calling asynchronous web services and getting values from a hundred different web services to compare values. Uh, whatever the case might be, whenever you have a lot of items to iterate through and you want to populate, put them in a collection, you can control how the user gets to those values by controlling the enumeration. So these were just some fundamental concepts. We're not really showing you any usable code at this point, but it sets the stage for some future concepts on actually implementing your own enumerations within your custom collections. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you.